Hello everyone, this is Lindsay. I want to welcome you back to my channel. Today is a craft with me and I thought that I would do something simple, but I think it's powerful. I got the idea from Gail's channel, um, Gail Agostinelli on YouTube, but I'm going to put my own spin on it and use it for my own purpose. So today the whole idea is using limited supplies. I was also inspired by my dear crafty friend Lonnie because we were having a discussion over Facebook Messenger about being really busy and not being able to being able to have time in our craft room. And we were throwing back ideas back and forth about things that we could do when we can't make it to the craft room. Like maybe we have to take a few things to the kitchen table because we're watching children or we um, have company over or we only have 10 minutes and it doesn't make sense to go to wherever our craft room is. So we threw back, uh, back and forth different ideas and it got me thinking. So what we're going to do today is uh, mass make some papers for our journals. This is something I'm really trying to focus on right now. Let me show you my little my little pile. <laughs> it doesn't stay very big because I honestly pull from it a lot. But one of the hardest things for me in making junk journals is having papers ready and not wasting a lot of time combing through papers trying to figure out what to use. So I have... Um, different size papers here. They're inked. Um, some of them are like jelly printed, inked, scrapbook papers. Um, this is a misprint, but some of them I've even printed multiples of the same thing in color schemes I know I'll use, like purple stripes. And then this is uh, from one of my kits. I think this is from Down Purple Lane, but it's just a floral purple. So I use this in a lot of journals, that style. Um, I also printed a bunch of, I printed, I think, 10 of these, maybe not that many. I thought, I don't know. I printed a lot of them, five or 10 of them. And they're a vintage music page with peach colored lines. This is the only one I have left. I've used it in almost every journal I've made since I printed it. So I'll need to reprint some of this. I didn't realize that this was going to be so well used. And then just extra pages that I've come across um, from books or um, just areas of my craft room that I've been cleaning out. These are from an old rose book. Part of the noise in the background that is my gate alarm. I'm pretty sure a bunny rabbit is hopping in front of it. We have so many bunnies this time of year around here in the country. Um, so here's all of these beauties. And then, um, like I said, just random papers that I found. So I hope this gives you an idea. This is some, I think this is some jelly print work that my mom and I did when she was here. Oh, nope. Oh, I guess I do have more of these. Yep, a whole bunch of these. And this I accidentally printed double-sided. This is an ephemera page, but I like it. So I put it in here. So these I can grab from, they're ready to go. So I'm gonna make some more for this pile and then maybe even put some in my shop. I have some coffee dyed paper and I think this is avocado dyed paper. I did not dye these papers. I got these in Happy Mail and I'm excited. The first thing I'm going to do, let's just start with the coffee dyed paper. I'm going to fold it in half. So I'm just folding them all in half so they're ready to go into the journal. And then I can place the stamps exactly where I would want them. I have chosen stamps from my collection and only what I could easily carry in one trip. Everything that I brought into this room to film, I carried in one small arm load. The point of that is if you have to go to the basement for your craft room or an upstairs bedroom or wherever, you can just grab what you need in one handful, bring it to the kitchen or dining room or TV tray and be ready to do a project that doesn't take that long. That's another thing. Um, if it doesn't take that long and you can finish it within 20 minutes or an episode of TV or a conversation with a friend, then you will be able to just put it back in that same arm load and take it right back to your craft room. Sometimes simple things get overlooked on our channels or in our minds because they're so simple. We're trying to think about something complicated. Maybe we're trying to think about completing journal covers and sewing in signatures, and we need 10 to 20 items to complete what we're doing. But there is power in simplicity, and there's power in prepping things for our journals. That way, when we have an hour to spend in the craft room, 
we have things that are already ready. We can grab papers quickly and get that journal together. Because to me, the boring part of making a journal is assembling it. The exciting part is decorating it. So I have these two papers to pull from. I grabbed four markers. <laughs> Look at how hot, got hot glue all over that. These are fa uh, the Faber Castell of the dual tip, two different colors. This really helps with um, having less in your craft room or grabbing less. That's why I grabbed these because I get eight colors with only four markers. I got these at Hobby Lobby probably four years ago, three plus four plus years ago. Most of them still work pretty well. And these are for coloring in a stamp if I want to do multiple colors. I only grabbed one ink pad and I grabbed an old, old grungy one just to show you, you don't need expensive ink pads. We love expensive ink pads. You, you want, you just, I love ink pads. I want every ink pad ever made. That is, I'm laughing at myself, but it's kind of true. I actually got this in an eBay D stash lot. I don't know how old it is. I'm going to guess early 1990s and I'm hoping it still works. I think it does, but I'm showing you, even if you have an old one laying around somewhere, you can use that. Also, if you have a whole bunch of ink pads laying around that you tried or you didn't like, um, I'd be more than happy to take them off your hands, either purchase them from you or trade a journal. Um, I could make you a journal or something like that. I love mixed media supplies. I use every last drop of ink um, and I even dye papers with the ink even if they're mostly dried out. So enough words, right? So here's the stamps that I chose to work with today. This is only a small amount of my stamps, but they were easy to carry and they're pretty generic. So I can use them in almost any journal I make. I grabbed a typewriter. I got this one at Hobby Lobby, um, I would say about two years ago for $1.62. It was clearanced out. So I don't even know if you can get this one anymore, but I everyone needs a typewriter stamp, I think. Another one I got at Hobby Lobby at that same time, it was clearanced out at $2.50, is this beautiful floral. And here is an edge stamp. I might have gotten this from Vicky. I'm not 100% sure on that. Just a pretty little floral edge stamp. I've got my bunny set. Um, these I gotten from AliExpress. My son was using them last with a blue marker. They do have a Chinese characters on them underneath. Um, so I actually use a marker and just color in the bunny, um, but I have my bunny set. And then I have, I haven't tried these yet. I got these in an Amazon swap. These are little floral stamps. I'm going to take them out of their boxes and we are going to try them today. My Amazon swap is I make you a journal and you send me something off my Amazon wish list or I have a scrapbook.com wish list. It's a lot of fun. Um, I actually don't have too many to do right now. I think I have one, one that I need to do for Maria. So if you are interested in that, send me an email or a Facebook message. I'll give you the links to that and we can have some fun. I brought my acorn stamp and I don't remember. I think I got this. I think I got this on AliExpress. I'm not sure. And then I have a Stampin' Up! set. This is the summer afternoon set. Um, I think I got this in Happy Mail. And it's really cute. So I haven't used it yet, I don't think. So I'm excited to try that. If you have old Stampin' Up! sets that you want to trade, um, that you're not using, that you want to trade for a journal, I would be happy to do that as well. Swapping and trading for journals works really well for me and maybe you'll get something in exchange for something you don't use anymore. All right, so let's um, get going. I'm just gonna, nothing fancy here. Here's my paper. I'm gonna start off with just a simple flourish. You don't need a ton of stamps to make an impact. I don't even know if this is gonna work. So um, let's give it a go. This is not a video on proper stamping techniques. I'm probably gonna break every rule in the book, but that's okay. I'm doing what I wanna do and what works for me. Okay, so I probably have to press a little harder on the ink pad, but that's still a good flourish. Let me press. I think it's a black ink, actually. I was wondering if it was blue. Am I still in frame? I'm down here at the end of the paper. There we go. That looks nice. And I'm just going to make like a little frame for all of these sides. It's 
just relaxing too. It doesn't take a lot of thought process. So if you want to work on something, but you've had a long day at work or a long day taking care of kids or a long day running errands or you've just been resting all day, you haven't been feeling well, this is a great thing to do. And honestly, you could just grab one or two stamps and make a whole bunch. So uh, this would just work in pretty much any journal. So that was fun. Um, I think what I'm going to do, one, two, three, four, is I want to make four of them and put them in my shop with the scroll. So let me get some of this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing better. We'll just chat while I'm working on that. So Tuesday is my craft with me day and it tends to be an errand day for me because I know I don't have to list too many items. So it's a good day for me to run errands and it is the last Tuesday before my boys finish their school for the year. So I do not know how my filming schedule is going to be over the summer. I'm going to still try to do five videos a week, but if you don't see a video from me on one of the weekdays, don't fret. It just means I'm doing something with my boys and I didn't have time to get a video up. I'm still here. Um, heading over to my Facebook group, Nevermore Creations Drunk Journals and Friends. I am very likely to post over there. If there's not going to be a video, you'll probably see a post, sorry, no video today. We're at the beach or sorry, no video today. We're on a walk or whatever. But I will try to do even a short video and I'll try to keep listing items. I mentioned in yesterday's video, I'm looking for a few more um, journal makers to join the marketplace. We do not have a huge backlog of boxes. We have a really nice system going and I would like um, three or four new journal artists get some new talent in the marketplace. It would be fantastic. You are going to really be excited for tomorrow's video because I will be introducing the newest supplier for Nevermore Creations. And that is Cindy Anderson. I haven't opened her box yet, but I have a supply box for her. And I am, that one has like a sticker or something on it. I'll just put that in my own pile. Not a problem. I'm not going to put it in the shop, but I'll use it. So we'll just grab an extra piece, right? Okay. So I was chatting about Cindy and I don't know what she's made yet. We'll open it up and see, but I'm really excited. And we have some snippet rolls from Barb. So be on the lookout for that. Very, very excited. Now, the difference between a marketplace journal artist and a supplier is that the suppliers are hand-picked. Anybody can be a journal artist on my in my shop as long as they meet the guidelines. You can find those in the announcements section of my Facebook group, but I hand-pick and have a limited number of suppliers. I am full right now. Cindy took Sasha's place because Sasha opened her own shop, her own crafty shop. And I saw that she posted a link to it in my Facebook group. So head over there and check that out. I don't have it here with me or anything, but I know she posted it there. So you can go over there and check that out. It's always exciting when my artists get to start their own shop. And I hope you'll support her and give her some crafty love at her new shop. I think it's called Sasha Scraps, but it's not on Etsy. It's on Shopify. So you'll have to go and click on the exact link. I'm getting tired of this stamp and I'm ready, ready to move on, but I'm going to do one more. So I have a set of four to put into Lindsay's handmade. These are just so nice for vintage journals. They're ready to go. And maybe you don't have this stamp and you like the look of it. And so you get a few pages like this and be able to stick them in your journals. 
almost done and we'll try out a new stamp. We are still working through um, deconstructing a book and using all the pages. I'm not done with that. I just didn't do it today because I have a different project all over that desk, that crafting desk, and I needed to bring something into here. All right, so these are listed in my shop under Lindsay's Handmade. It's a set of four, so you can purchase that if you want. I have two more of the coffee dyed left. I'm just going to make for myself, and I want to try this big floral. I think I was having trouble... Was I having trouble stamping it? I'm not sure. What do I want to do? We'll do green for the stems. The nice thing about using markers on a stamp, obviously I'd used silver ink on this before. I don't clean my stamps very well. Is you can color it in and get lots of different colors. I'm doing a little bit of burgundy in the middle and maybe we will um, fade out to some blue, I'm thinking. Just see how it looks. Experiment. It's like a purple blue. Get the tips. This does take a little longer than using an ink pad, but you can get different effects. And sometimes if a stamp stops stamping well, and you can't get even coverage, this is a good option. All right, I have no idea how this is gonna look, if I'm even gonna like it. So let's give it a try. Floral is always a no-brainer for me because I put floral in pretty much every journal. That's pretty, just soft and subtle. I think I'll do it again right here but I have a little bit of color left on it and I'm gonna see what happens if I just put some black over it. I don't know what'll happen. Just a soft outline, that's pretty. And I'll leave it, do I wanna leave it blank on the inside here? Yeah, I'll just leave that blank. Stick that in my pile. I'll do a little acorn. Great for nature journals. It does not have to be anything fancy. You can just add a couple stamps here and there. So when you're putting together your journal, you have something neat already. All right, let's move on to this pink paper. I think this is avocado dyed and I want to take four pages for the shop again and then the rest for my little stash. So those are for the shop. This is my stash. I'm trying to organize here. All right, I want to try these. Aren't they pretty? Love them. So I got that. Some Happy Mail. Okay, I think I'm going to use markers. I'm not really sure how I want to do this. Oh, I think I'll just color the whole thing in with it. I'm using a burgundy. So this will be really good for pink journals. We're adding a little bit of color to a vintage grunge journal. Let's see how well that turns out. Oh, that is pretty. Isn't that pretty? And then you just color back over it when you stamp again. Can be really relaxing. It just kind of calms you. It's a wonderful project to do when you want to get something accomplished but you just don't have the time 
or the space, you can clean this up in like two minutes. And you can grab a different set of stamps every time you do it. So if you do it again the next day, you can put all of these stamps back and you can just choose another set. And that pretty much is it. I will finish stamping this set of four off camera so that um, I don't keep doing it and doing it and you get bored, but it'll be in the shop. And before I go, I think there was a couple stamps that I missed that I wanted to show you. So let's do the typewriter. This one will, is just for my personal. Hopefully I can get enough ink on it. Let's see how that works. Okay, not too detailed. Could be the pad. So let's see what happens if I color it in with a marker. Or maybe I stamp on it like this. There we go. Let's see if I can line it up. That's better. No, it's <laughs> a little crookedy. I can put something over the front of that. So I won't worry about that. But I do want to try again. This ink pad is not juicy enough for the detail in this. Let me see. Checking my marker. I could go back to my craft room, grab another ink pad, but remember, I'm trying to do something outside of my craft room, and I don't want to be going back and forth. So if I have something else that works, like hopefully these markers, like I said, they're older. Hopefully these markers work. Then I'm going to use those. Well, I don't know if it is the stamp or it is my ink, but that one comes out kind of like lightly. So might end up using that on a jelly plate. I'm not too thrilled with that stamp. Okay, we did not try this floral one, and I'm thinking about trying the green on it. Seeing if that comes out well. Ooh, that's pretty. Just a little bit of nature on there. So we've tried that one. And then I want to try my Stampin' Up ones. How about this little dog in a wheelbarrow? Look at how cute that is. I don't know if I can trust this black ink. But we were gonna give it a go. Ooh, looks like it's working. I love these red rubber stamps. You can really smush it down well. It's light, but it's cute. Let me try it with a marker. You could color each individual bit a different color if you wanted to. This is called having a play. <laughs> it's really detailed stamps. This would be nice to have my Tim Holtz stamp platform. I should have grabbed that. There we go. Look at how cute. 
so cute. We even have a little quote, nothing is worth more than this day. I think that would be nice. This is an easy one to use a marker on. Oh, doggy. I think UPS might be here and he's, he's going to bark. So I think I will let you all go. I hope that you have enjoyed this simple little idea and that you'll have a play and see what you come up with. If you don't like the way something stamps, like my horrible typewriter <laughs> could not get to stamp right, you can always cover it up and I'll just put a, you know, I could put it this way, put a pocket and just cover it right up and it doesn't matter at all. So I hope, I hope this was something that you can actually use in the next couple of days when you need to do something outside of your craft room, but you want to accomplish something. Have a wonderful day, friends.